So please welcome uh, Maria Aretulaki here from uh, Dialogue Connection Limited. Thank you. Is it on? Yes, it is. Uh, hello, yeah, um, I got notified that I was giving a talk last night at 9 o'clock, so be gentle with me. <laughs> so yeah, basically, um, uh, I've been working in uh, voice recognition for 16 years, but uh, every time someone was asking me what I do for a living, and I was telling them, they were saying, that went way, <laughs> way above my head. But then Siri came out, so now everyone knows what I do, which is great. Um, so yeah, voice recognition, you can see it, uh, you can see it everywhere now. Uh, you've had the uh, uh, digital dictation systems for medical and legal transcription for decades, and uh, uh, you've had the much uh, hated call center, automated call centers for at least 10 years now with uh, automated call routing to the right agent or department and voice of service such as telephone banking, uh, banking apps. Um, but uh, recently with uh, the advent of smartphones, you've had uh, dictation apps that are th things like speech to SMS or speech to tweet. Uh, and actually, as you may have noticed, they don't work that well, and I'll, I'll let you know why. But uh, mo even more recently, we've had speech-activated device control apps, so like the Siri now, and even um, speech-activated uh, game console, uh, the, the um, control of game consoles such as the, the Xbox with Kinect. And um, basically, one of the main um, one of the main criteria in uh, one of the main criteria in um, uh, Different, one of the main categories, uh, no, one of the main ways to uh, differentiate between different voice apps is that we have speaker dependent apps and speaker independent apps. So, speaker dependent apps can only recognize a single person. So, you have to train it, not much, so five minutes is usually sufficient, but a maximum of 20 minutes. Uh, and that's by speaking longer and shorter phrases. And it works really well with your voice. So even if you've got a cold or um, if you speak softer than usual because you're depressed or whatever, <laughs> hungover, then it'll work quite well. But it won't work with your mates, for example, or anyone, anyone else. It'll have to be retrained and then it'll only work for them, actually him or her. Uh, so you can, uh, it only works for a single person, but it, uh, you can talk relatively freely to some extent. And that's how dictation systems such as the ones used in medical and legal dictation work. So you can, you can formulate whole sentences and it usually works okay enough because usually actually uh, both um, um, doctors and, and, and lawyers usually have a secretary that will go over the result of the, the automated transcription and will correct the text. But basically it'll work for, it'll get the gist and then you have something to work with. But then you, we also have the, um, the old school <laughs> built-in voice recognition in the old phones where you had uh, some kind of basic voice dialing. So you would have associated um, uh, a recording of my mom and therefore you would say, call my mom, and then you wouldn't have to actually um, key in the number. Uh, and speaker independent apps can recognize anyone, but actually you have to be talking about something specific. So these are, this is the type of um, technology behind the automated call centers. Uh, so speech recognition happens somewhere in the cloud on a server. So it's not on your phone, like in the case of old school voice dialing in, in the old phones. Um, but yeah, usually it's things like uh, flight booking and um, benefit claims, online shopping. So it, the, the, sp the domain is specific. You cannot just talk about any, anything and you cannot just start philosophizing about life, the universe and everything. Enter Siri. <laughs> Sorry, enter smartphone apps, like, well, basically the, the ones uh, um, uh, promoted by Google and Apple now. Uh, so these are both speaker independent and you're supposed to be talking about everything. So 
again, speech recognition uh, happens in the cloud, so it's not uh, on your phone and you cannot actually train it to your own voice. Uh, it's supposed to be working for anyone. And you can, <laughs> basically it can only recognize the basic general vocabulary of the language. So you could talk about anything, but it has to be in the dictionary. And, and maybe you've heard about people trying to test Siri by th saying things like, Siri, where, where can I hide a body? Or Siri, will you marry me? And um, so yeah, and these are apps like uh, the Google Voice Search or uh, vo speak your tweets or speak your Facebook status. But they actually don't work that well either because uh, it will not know specifically what you're on about because you may have something specific in mind and it doesn't usually use context although Siri seems to be doing some of that now and it's I mean I know it's in beta and stuff but actually it is the future um, so it can work for anyone and doesn't need any training but it is sensitive if you've got uh, could I have <laughs> the first video please the Bernie Stone thing uh, it, if you've got a strong regional accent or a foreign accent then it will not work that well. I don't know if you know this video. What's the buttons? Oh no, they installed voice recognition technology in this lift. I heard about this. Voice recognition technology? In a lift? In Scotland? You ever tried voice recognition technology? No. They don't do Scottish accents. Eleven. Could you please repeat that? Eleven. 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 Could you please repeat that? Eleven. <laughs> Whose idea was this? You need to try an American accent. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. That sounds Irish, not American. What, doesn't it? Eleven. <laughs> Where in America is that? Dublin. I'm sorry. Could you please repeat that? Try an English accent, right? <clears throat> Eleven! <laughs> Eleven! You for the same part of England as Dick Van Dyke? Listen, you're so smart -ass. Please speak slowly and clearly. Smart -ass. <laughs> Eleven! I'm sorry, could you please repeat that? Eleven! If you don't understand a lingo, a way back came to your own country. Ooh! It's that talk now, is it? A way back to your own country? Oh, don't start, Mr. Bleeding Heart. Yeah, you can watch it on, on YouTube, it's a big hit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what is voice recognition? I mean, why do things go wrong? Voice recognition is the, the conversion of speech to text. So spoken words are transcribed into written words or a continuous wave signal, such as this, is translated into something like and sadly, crime experts predict that one day even a friendly conversation between mother and daughter will be conducted at gunpoint, taken from brass eye. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you've got a stream of sound translated into a written representation of those words and that translated into user intention, what is the caller, what is the user trying to get done. And then you actually have the system action or system prompt, so it connects you to the right person. So voice recognition is sadly not an exact science. And that's because even among humans, it's fraught with misunderstandings. So how many times have you had to repeat your name, for example? Or how many times have you had people bursting into laughter because they thought you said something else, something different to what you actually said? And therefore, it's no wonder that computers cannot do it better anyway. Or uh, So it's, it's all guesswork. And... Um, uh, voice recognition uses, I mean, a kind of lexicon, so a, a text representation of uh, the most relevant words that you want recognizing with the phonetic transcri transcription, so the ways that most people uh, pronounce that word. The problem is that if you ha we have regional accents, so the same word will be pronounced differently by someone from London, Liverpool, Newcastle, New York, whatever. And even worse, you may have foreign speakers, well, foreign speakers uh, speaking the language. So in the case of an English app, for example, you would need to 
cover Punjabi and Chinese pronunciations of, of the words rather than, say, for example, Japanese or German variants, because you won't have that many Japanese or, and German native speakers using your app in the UK, say. So, uh, although the, the rec recognition... Ooh, time remaining, what? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so, although recognition is usually based on our lexicon, though, it's, uh, it's done in the context... It's statistical because every word is recognized in the context of the surrounding words. But there is, unfortunately, ambiguity because the, there are different ways of chopping up the signal, which will translate into different words and, of course, different meaning. And this is a famous example of why voice recognition is so complex, because the same, you have two different signals that mean something completely, two di completely different things. So how to recognize speech and how to wreck a nice beach. That works better if you speak in, with an American accent, but still. So we have ambiguity, and, uh, but usually it's the, um, the domain will uh, clear that ambiguity up. So if we know that we're talking about uh, pattern recognition, then we know that we're not talking about beaches. And uh, so, yeah, uh, the, there are two different approaches uh, in voice recognition systems. We've got the manual approach, where you actually write down all the different words that you expect the users to say and how they are combined together. Um, but uh, with, uh, with smartphone apps, this is not good enough. You need large amounts of training data, so real, uh, real data on how people really talk either to one another or to um, in human machine interfaces and you learn the most likely combinations of sounds in that language and that's actually uh, it is descripti descriptive so it describes how things are in the real world rather than prescriptive which is what the manual approach does but it can actually accurately predict say um, uh, sentences that have not been coded before so it's really good in, in predicting and therefore it's more accurate. And it also covers a, a spontaneous speech phenomena such as hesitation, um, um, and uh, self-correction, I'd like, tell me, etc. So, and, and co colloquial English rather than Queen's English. Um, so manual voice recognition, uh, uh, the manual vo voice recognition uh, approach is the one used in automated call centers uh, that uh, where the domain is really limited, but uh, smartphone apps use the statistical approach. And uh, here I can tell you, <laughs> when there is no context, so I was, I was uh, uh, speaking my shopping list, and every time I was saying feta cheese, it would transcribe that into sex. And I was perplexed, I was thinking, but why? Because it happened more than once, you know, I really tested it. And then someone came up with the idea, oh, maybe feta cheese, it actually understands fetish. And therefore, <laughs> there comes the sex. So basically, everything is a wild guess. And finally, yeah, more or less the final slide. Uh, basically, the future is because we know we know that statistical uh, voice recognition is the statistical approach is better, but actually, on its own, it's not sufficient. Uh, so we need context, and I believe that in the future you have basically context-based voice rec recognition, which is something that Siri has gone towards. And uh, you will have not just robust statistical recognition, but also you'll be using the context of the use, the context of the device, the context of user data. So, for example, what other apps have you got open at the time? Where are you? You know, GPS, location, etc. Uh, what have you just, uh, how have you just updated your Facebook status, etc. So, if we, we will be going from voice recognition to intention understanding and perhaps later in reading your soul. So, and we'll go from reactionary, well, reaction-based voice recognition, where you have to click a button for voice recognition to work, to vo the voice recognition app taking the initiative and actually activating itself. So we could have un unsolicited, unsolicited um, reminders, warnings, for example, uh, the, the app could uh, tell me, you know, oh, you need to ring your mom, you haven't rung her in two months. <laughs> but I don't want to. <laughs> and, uh, and then you, you will have basically multimodality, so not only voice recognition, but you obviously you have clicking on web pages and activation of other apps. Multi-device, where you have information stored somewhere in the cloud and all devices um, uh, basically update 
each other and multi-location. So um, what do I want to say? Yes. But the <laughs> whatever happens, the main thing is that the app will need to be usable, simple to use and intuitive, self-explanatory, and the user needs to feel understood, uh, but also to like the app and to want to come back. Because uh, at the very least, the user should not be irritated. And I would like the MP3s, if possible. Because otherwise, you get what I get in various apps that I sometimes test. Just the last one, please. <laughs> OK, now. And then the other All one. Them run. Chosen Com Hardy, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and the last video, please. So in the future, we may have, well, the, the series. Apps talking to, it's not showing. In the future, you will have apps talking to one another. Sorry, I missed that. It's no problem. Okay. I'm okay if you're okay. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Thank you. So everything is in the context. Thanks. <laughs>